Okay, welcome back to statics. So we've talked about trusses. So some characteristics about a truss is that uh, a truss is used to support loads. It is composed of straight members. There are two force members and they're connected at joints at the end of members. So those are some char general characteristics of trusses. But there's also frames and machines. So a frame also supports loads. Now, differing from the truss, a frame contains at least one multi-force member. Whereas the trusses were two force members exclusively, a frame can have a third member acting on it, or a fourth or a fifth, at least one multi-force member. So a member acted upon by three or more forces, which are generally not directed along the member, whereas the truss had the line of action of the forces because they're two force members, the line of action of the forces were collinear and passing through the either end of the member. A multi-force member is not constrained in that way, so it can have a, another force coming in at some midpoint on the member at any angle. And then machines, so frames, trusses support loads, frames support loads. Machines transfer or transmit and modify loads, so they can take a force and, um, and and use it for for leverage. Let's say, maybe you can think of uh, a system of pulleys where you can, through a system of pulleys, you can lift a very big load with a very small amount of effort. That'd be a machine. So machines transmit and modify forces, and they move. They contain moving parts, such as the pulley. And also, like frames, they contain at least one multi-force member. So generally speaking, to analyze a frame or machine, what's the first thing you do? You draw a free body diagram. And generally speaking, draw a free body diagram of the entire machine so that you can determine its reactions forces at the supports. You don't always need to do that, but gener generally speaking, that'll be a first step. And then you dismember the machine and draw a free body diagram of each member. So dismember. Think of what we did in class the other day where we exploded that truss and looked at each member of the truss and each of the pins as well. So explode the thing into its components and each component of a machine gets its own free body diagram. And then zero in on any two force members and label the forces. The benefit of that is that you know on the two force members the forces are equal, opposite, and collinear. And they're helpful to help you work out the geometry of the problem. Step four, gen generally speaking, is to um, focus in on the multi-frame members and draw the free body diagram showing obviously it's a free body diagram so you're going to show all of the loads acting on the member and all of the reactions and forces at the connections. And then finally, you do what you're learning to do all the time, and that is apply your equations of equilibrium. And you can apply the equations of equilibrium to each component and work your way through the system of components to finally analyze the machine and determine all the forces that are acting on each individual member. I'll show you what I mean.